best gaming headphones right now in this video we're gonna take a look at the dt 990a headphone i've been using for the past four years now i've tried many gaming headsets and headphones over the years but i keep coming back to these uh, rather sleek looking fellas guys in this video i'm going to explain why i believe this is the best headphone for gaming to this day all right coming up How's it going guys, Robin here on Chips Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for gaming on this channel. You'll find PC components, tech gadgets and console accessories as well as product reviews. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the uh, what I believe is the best headphones for gaming money can buy on the market right now. With that said, let's get started. So, Bayer Dynamic is the brand and it's on the same level as Sennheiser and Philips. And even Sony, now the DT990 that we got today are the 250 ohms impedance factor but it also comes in 32 ohms and 600 ohms a lot of people are asking what impedance mean and which one you should get and how much you really need don't worry guys i'm gonna cover the difference i'm gonna explain what this means a little bit later in this video now the dt990 sits at a very interesting price point at about 165 us dollars for the pro version and 190 US dollars for the DT edition. The speakers are the same, it's just some minor differences. Now, if you're looking for a next level upgrade from your standard gaming headset, this is definitely the way to go. I've been using this particular headphone for almost four years now, believe it or not. In almost every type of gaming genre out there, and I gotta say, they've never let me down. I'm coming from a history with countless of gaming headset that I've used in the past. Several different steel series headsets turtle beach headsets and a couple of razor headsets but the dt990 seems to be the one that i'm always getting back to it, it's it's hard to explain guys but it is the next level of experiencing sound and acoustic signals in my opinion now looking at the form we got the typical biodynamic aluminum support on each side the houses the ear cup and for the four years that i've used them they managed to stay very close to the same condition as they were when they were new apart from the velour pads that have lost a little bit of density as you might be able to tell and the headband that clearly shows some evidence of wear nevertheless as i said everything works and they sound as good as they did when they were new and even though i've dropped them a couple of times i haven't found a single scratch on them oddly now sliding over to the ear cups they are size adjustable as you would imagine now a lot of headsets especially gaming headsets on the market has a very irritating pressure of the headband now, i'm happy to say that the dt990 is the uh, opposite to that probably also one of the main reasons why i keep coming back to them not just because of the headband but how lightweight they are again they cannot be compared with gaming headsets it is another league in terms of comfort and we haven't even touched on sound yet and before we speaking of sound let me just talk a little bit more about the ear cups which has a very interesting design now, as you can see we are looking at an open grill like design here where there's plenty of spacing where air and noise can travel freely i personally prefer open Open design of a closed because you end up with a richer sound with tons of ambience now what is the difference between open and closed design ear cups then well i made a separate video where i covered the difference between closed and open design headsets in depth but you can find that video down below now as you have plenty of noise leaking through the ear cups they're not very suitable for traveling or to use in any other noisy environment at all they should only be used at home when you're gaming or listening into music that's where they shine the most now personally i always gravitate towards this type of headphone since you get the best experience with an open design in my opinion now something to be aware of is that yeah the cable is not removable and it's uh, it's quite long if you rather prefer a shorter cable i highly recommend the dt990 pro edition instead which has a coiled cable this is also the same headphone that ninja has been using for quite some time anyway it connects through a quarter of an inch adapter and as i said it is an adapter unscrew it 
to reveal the 3.5 millimeter now with that said let's just touch on impedance super fast now, impedance is the so-called alternating current resistance the headphones have under specific standard conditions now on devices with low input impedance headphones are the louder the lower their impedance is this basically means that if you want your headphones to work on devices that are operated by battery or rechargeable batteries including most portable devices you want to get the 32 ohms if you on the other hand have an amplifier or a built-in amplifier on your motherboard Psst. by the way guys most newer motherboards have that if so you want to get the 250 ohms or the 600 but the 250 is a sweet spot in my opinion so the large and super soft ear cushions are made of microfiber and you gotta try these on to understand how comfortable they are guys by far the best material on a headphone i've ever worn they are circular in shape and even seal around the ear causing no concentration pressure at any specific point i have been editing for hours hours with these on and yeah eventually you almost forget about even wearing them now the dt990 are known for being very picky of the amplifier according to uh, people on the net however i have tried them on both my built-in sound card on my x 370 asus crosshair motherboard as well as my nad receiver i haven't experienced any problem whatsoever driving the uh, 250 ohm version though again i recommend you to stick to the 32 ohm version if you don't have an amplifier laying around or a built-in one on your motherboard because if you want to go higher than 32 ohms you need an amplifier to give them the extra oomph if you guys get what i mean now let's cover the elephant in the room so how is the sound well the high are very crisp a sort of edgy extension you can obviously adjust that with an equalizer and lower the higher tones if you want for my taste however they're spot on in terms of balance and yeah brighter presentation the bass is very relaxed and present and it's quite impressive how much bass you got given it's an open design headphone which makes them very suitable for gaming and i cannot stress this enough guys as far as music goes almost every genre sound amazeballs bass is not as prominent as many gaming headsets yet it's fast and punchy i really love it this way though keep in mind that the treble can be a little bit exhausting in treble heavy music but for hip-hop adm rock and so forth the sound is definitely on point the large sound stage open design makes them excellent for gaming the downside as far as sound goes is the mid-range being pushed back a little bit and the treble can be a little bit fatiguing for sensitive ears again i would highly recommend the use an equalizer if you would find the treble strong many motherboards with built-in sound cards today has tons of customizations that can be made here asus for example has an excellent software i'm using all the time to fine tune my sound in the end of the day i couldn't be happier with the dt990 from buyer dynamic with four years of daily use they're still my main headphone to this day for more details guys check the amazon links down below now guys let me know what is your favorite headset slash headphones let me know down in the comments below also don't hesitate to jump over to twitter or instagram and say hi and i promise to get back to you all right now on this channel i cover a variety of gaming related peripherals tech console and pc components such as headsets headphones mics monitors and so on recently i listed the bed budget gaming mice as well as the best mechanical gaming keyboards link to those videos can be found down below with that said who am i to talk about this well first off i've been a gamer since i can't remember i'm a tech savvy and i worked in the gaming peripheral scene in the past i also built an overclock computers for 12 years and i've been a content creator for three now there's a ton of videos just around the corner for you guys if you're looking for the best budget monitor headset keyboard headphones mouse pad and more consider subscribing also don't forget to tap the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any uploads on my end thank you so much for watching this video my name is robin here on chips media until next time guys have an awesome day all right bye